not quite a show. Not, this not is a so, so what session is this? Siri, Siri, what's Tontek doing? Oh dear. Well, I think it's going to be. I think I just started the recording in this room. <laughs> <laughs> Who's running this session? Okay. And you're off screen, so you're going to have to change seats so you're on screen. Oh, well, I could just lean in, but um, that would be bad for your posture. So everyone, all right, all right, all right. Here. Rotate. I in apologize. This, this, this is a few more people here than I've been spending. Sorry, over here. I apologize in advance. Um, so. Again. So here's the conversation I want to have. We are all, as uh, IndieWeb participants, building up a database about ourselves and our activities uh, on our own websites, uh, on our own terms, using the content types that we choose to have on our own sites. Um, we know, like I know, I've got like an Echo at home. I, I, Siri so doesn't work, but occasionally I accidentally trigger it. Suddenly, all my devices have it. Um, I would like to be able to answer questions about my own activity mm -hmm. my, through one of these interfaces and also answer questions uh, about the activity of the people I'm connected to and potentially the uh, organizations and things I'm connected to as well. So it's not just about um, connecting to and sort of saying, you know, where is Johannes? Uh, or um, where is the next Hungry Website Club, for example. But also, like maybe I want to create a, um, a server on my own website to answer queries, answer particularly domain specific queries that, that I know that um, I have, you know, I can answer. Or I, I want to write a piece of software that answers specific questions on a particular topic, right? And host it from, host it from my website that have it queryable from other people's uh, series or Alexa's or whatever the Samsung one is called, et cetera, right? Is there specific uh, questions in mind you want to ask? Well, so for people, it is about location or it is, for example, uh, hey Siri, uh, ask, yeah, well done. Mm -hmm. uh, hey Dingus, hey Dingus. Hey, hey, Dingus. Dingus. Which you yeah. can. <laughs> <laughs> there are so many Dingus in my song. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, but like, um, he didn't just ask uh, Jonathan if he wants to have a beta next Tuesday. Right. right? Oh, that's a good idea. Like, like something like that. And then it'll actually, like my agent will go out and actually communicate to our websites. And you'll that's get... That's an interesting take on the problem. It's literally decent. It's the same exact thing as any web for like your website. You're saying you want it to have, in that case, would it create something on my site and on your site? Yeah. And then we would, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, it, and it could just be what mentioned, but you know, behind the scenes. But it's just it's a non-visual interface yeah. for it. Very interesting. So are you envisioning this protocol to be sound between the two sites, or something no. marked up? So you would have my my guess is that you would have like a, a thin layer at your end that takes voice. Or could take us probably takes text. Yeah, probably text. Probably takes text. Probably takes text. Although every year I this year I didn't, but every year I demo my my indie series. I do have a bot that um, takes takes voice that runs on just web protocols. Um, takes that, turns it into a query, looks at that query, analyzes you know based on the form of the question, decides which source it wants to ask uh, the question to, then actually hits an API on someone else's site to get the answer to that question. So what would that API look like for this kind of question? Because it doesn't seem to exist. It doesn't exist. There well, seem to be several kinds I mean, of problems. You know? My devil's advocate, or my kind of like question would be, why not Alexa or Siri? So, so it could be, right? It could be. And, and so like in the case of Alexa, you, I mean, all of them are operating systems. So yes. you could absolutely have a service that runs on Alexa yeah. that then talks, <laughs> like acts as an interface again, and right. translate the query in exactly the same way. And you could have exactly the same thing on Siri. So it could mm -hmm. actually be agnostic to wherever the voice layer is. Yes. You're going to do some of this too. He's, he can post to his site with Alexa. He can post a note. So he's added an Alexa skill thread. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Alexa, that's cool. Yeah, because yeah, to me, there's like, there's multiple different layers here, right? There's what does the, what, what features do our websites support yep. and the interactions between the websites support? Yep. And there's, there's a layer that can translate voice into text, and then there's a layer that is 
based upon this textual query or statement, do a thing, right? right? And I think those are three different Things. Absolutely. And like the, the, I feel like we'd be crazy if we all like built our own NLP interfaces. Right. Exactly. Um, that, that, that was so just an experience. Yeah. Uh, we have these interfaces that are there mm -hmm. that are a bit like web browsers. Yeah. And we can attach services then to them. So do you understand the architecture you're proposing correctly just to be on the same page? Yeah. That you're speaking into something, that yep. something talks to your website. Yep. Your website talks to his website. Yep. Some agent on your side does something. In a uh, simplest case, it will just basically notify you. In a more complex thing, it will actually look at your calendar and return something suitable. It comes back, and then what happens on your, your, your end? It speaks back. back it, it speaks back. So, so two hours later? No, not two hours later. Like, um, all right, so hold on. So, I'm guessing it would be kind of like, you know, hey Dingus, uh, would you see if Ben wants to have lunch yeah. uh, tomorrow at, you know, you know, such and such restaurant so, at two o'clock or whatever. So let's try this. Where are you? So this is the web interface I built, yeah. and it's just querying my website. What's your annual pay? Is it? I last checked into Mozilla Portland seven hours ago. Excellent. Yes. So, and that's clearly my voice. So the um, the, the NLP is actually so the so the voice recognition is actually built into the I Chrome. Chrome. It's speech just, just using API, right? Chrome speech recognition API, Stanford open source NLP libraries. Uh, it's going out and doing the search and actually querying my right. uh, my location uh, data on my website. So like that's. It's a bit of a cheek because they're running on the same server, but right. but the the um, the principle applies. They're just literally going out and looking at indie web data, bringing it back and mm -hmm. and and speaking it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean it's just crazy. It's a very thin layer because the browser supports speech recognition, exactly. so, and it's the same as if you typed it in. Really. That's the cool part, right? This that exactly. speech recognition yeah. stuff's free. So to me, I think that's really. As soon as you build that, it works for anybody. What are the agents is doing on our website? That's really the kind of the real question is. Yes. What is my agent doing, and what is your agent doing? And if you say I want to have lunch with John, John ask Jonathan if he wants to have lunch. Yes. It's going to your agent, which is then going to send something to my agent or to my website. Who knows? So here's what I think it might be doing. Okay. Is that it's the let's say if I if I've got this hooked up on my website. Yes. My website then has configured a number of different question types, mm -hmm. right? The, uh, and it looks at the question, it decides if it's one of those question types. Yep. If it has a handler for one of those question types, mm -hmm. it's going out and, um, and and handling that question, just passing over to that code. Is that how you have to do it right now? Yes, just locally? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you would have to do some kind of discovery on this side whether that question type is actually understood over there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And some negotiation? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. You try and the idea is to sort of essentially kind of articulate a set of potential questions that are being asked. Right. So then, yeah, right. So there's, so in the case of location, right, I might know that it might like know that, okay, I'm connected to all these people who have indie websites, right? Mm -hmm. right. And so if I'm saying, uh, where is Johannes, it could just look at, it knows to look at Johannes' website for location for this versus actually asking Johannes' website if it will actually mm -hmm. handle, handle that for you. <laughs> yeah. Or might be like when your so so, so yeah. someone might not even have to have an agent at all. Yeah, right. So for some, for someone theoretically else, speaking. Theoretically speaking, to someone else, like for a more sophisticated query, someone might publish an agent to handle a certain kind of question that you can mm -hmm. install to your so website. So basically, there are sort of local smarts, and then there are smarts on the other side, and the local smarts is trying to figure out yeah. um, what is this, and based on what it knows about the other, it's trying to handle it locally, or it is delegating it remotely, mm -hmm. right? If, if I can delegate it, then I'm going to do as well as I can locally. Mm -hmm. That might mean, oh, you know, this is actually a Google Calendar, so I have to read the Google Calendar Right. Right. Yeah. Okay. Complicated. Complicated. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like a simple smallback could be when you're asking him if he doesn't have anything to answer that. I mean, it could just post a note yeah. on your post and reply yeah. to him. No one totally. mentioned. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, that would be the ultimate simple. Like the the basic thing is things we already know our website support. Our website yeah. support web mention. Yeah. Right. We know exactly. that. Yeah. So. That would be the basic, but what would a web mention? Would a web mention my front page? Yeah. And then I would have to have something that handles front page web mentions, which I don't even know if no one does. Um, it doesn't right now, but it yeah, could. But right. it could. That's not too hard to do. And then that would. Wait, what would the front page? What would be the essentially a 
are the objects. Well, I think that would be a question, right? You could potentially have like endpoints basically that rep that map to some of these question types, like you know. so, so for example, Neo if no one doesn't know what account they can yeah. answer questions by account, but if it knows about pictures or locations or check ins, then I can't. So it seems like there's a one to one correspondence. Yeah, depending which on the like you have and some understood endpoints on indie websites that kind of reflect the state of your data. So what Google calls these actions, right? So yeah. action is a actions, specific yeah. kind of composable unit of interaction. Right? So again, it's the idea of a web action. Yeah, I hate me to give it a name. Like, <laughs> um, you know, like a web action, which is like, you know, what action, what action? Then you sort of have to be able to like query it up to a point. It's like, yeah. do you support, you know, location actions? What do you support, yeah. you know, calendar actions? And you can just do that like with like a million Basically, rel links, right? Yeah. Well, as yeah. rel links, we've already got all the data pumps, like an age calendar or an no, age event, or we have to we have to really do it. It's just a case of discovering links that are not necessarily on the front page. Right. right. So, and we don't want to use like. Um, I also think. Um, website. Oh, web mention could be web mention to the front page could be an interesting way to do all of it. Yeah. Because if you're sending a request yeah. to me, yeah. hitting my front page with a web mention that contains specific markup that yeah. talks about the type of thing that I'm asking. It could, at its very minimal, just add something to a sort of inbox on my website that I can see, oh, Ben sent me a web mention yeah. about do you want to have lunch at 2 o'clock tomorrow at this location, right? Yeah. But if my website is smart enough, it can see that incoming web mention and say, oh, that web mention says it's a, you know, it's an event, right? So it could translate that into a yes, no. And then I could even... I think the voice part is kind of second. It's interesting, but it's secondary. Yes. Yeah. It's a, no. It's it's like a gimmick, basically. And well, the, and the real. That's a really important gimmick, gimmick, actually. But but yeah. But the the real meat is what happens in between yes. in between those endpoints. I, I mean, mean, I think what what one, 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 nice one of the nice things about architecture is that the voice recognition is local to you. So if for some reason you and Siri don't get along, yeah. accent wise, you yeah. pick an yeah. engine that actually gets along yeah. with you. <laughs> <laughs> no, and, and as a result, it's completely ignored. So yeah. like it doesn't matter if I'm in the Apple ecosystem or the yeah. Android ecosystem. Yeah, I can see it being sort of dumb where it's just working off of published information, yeah. but then I can see it being smart where it's actually hooking two intelligent agents together and they upgrade from like a simple request to a conversation between the agents, which might happen like the big win for this one I see is like booking appointments. Like when are, so there's a when are you free, when am I free? Oh, well. Yes. If I move this appointment over here, I can make time for you here. You know, that's a difficult thing to do. It is. In fact, the way they do is they fall back to tunes to pretend to be robots to do it. There's a startup that does this. So yeah. I'll find yeah. it up. They actually started by having very little AI and mostly humans doing it. Yeah. But that way they learned how humans work. And increasingly, yeah. they're moving towards that. So, yeah. so, yeah. so the question is, how much get to some extent can you leverage third parties? How much do you want it? Because, of course, that's the whole of proprietary, you know. So, do something I'm really interesting, interesting about this. Or... What we're not talking about is not to have a website here that has a format that has a protocol and stuff like that. We're talking about the intelligent agent that does things on our behalf. It's a completely different problem. However, well, but how does it do those things? We have to resolve that, okay? Yeah, like, but it's a complete, it's, it's, right? yeah that's yeah, right. What's the simplest way? Like what's the simple well, what of interaction? What, what if you've already you publish on your website? You yeah. Gage calendar. Then, right. Uh, here's what I'm busy. Here's what right, right, right. And you ask, and he goes over and says, "Well, no, he's busy then." Because right. And so in fact, yeah. there's not zero AI there. You found an age calendar, then on the 23rd of June, right? He's busy. Right. Well, At nine o'clock. He's just okay, he's going to have lunch. Well, he's busy. And so we, you've kind of done a lot there without all you've done is you've hit a web page, found data we already know about, and answered a really simple question. We come back and give an answer. Right, but you, nothing changes if you make it more complex, right? If you ask the well, if there's nothing there. If you, you ask, uh, can you instead of asking, um, can you have lunch at two on uh, next Tuesday at this restaurant? You could say, um, uh, what about you get together uh, sometime over the summer, summer in a place we met before? Right. It's the same question, architecture, the same thing, but all of a sudden there's all this intelligence. Yeah, yeah. But it is a localized intelligence. It, it, it doesn't change the basic interactions. It doesn't change the basic interactions. And in, the, in that specific case, actually, the intelligence can just fall back to the human who can kind of. Go exactly. Back to the yeah. To me, that, that's the ultimate insight is what, the, the, at the very basic level, what it is is some way for your website to ask my website a question. 
yeah. on on my behalf, yeah. right? On your behalf and on my behalf. Yeah. And then if, at the, if in the beginning all that is is literally queues, it's basically email. I mean, but, <laughs> it's, but if you just did it with web mention and you used you know market formats to say what type of request you're asking, whatever, yeah. then your website could be the agent and it could decide, okay, this is a request for if it asks me where I am, if my website doesn't doesn't know how to respond to that, it would just be an inbox item. And I could web mention back manually and say, oh, I'm at Starbucks right now. Just like the only is of e-commerce, right? right? I have a, a, a form to type something in yeah. and do a submit, but it really gets into a printout and somebody does everything manually. But if your the website order. knows, it's like, oh, this was a request for your location and you just checked in at Starbucks, exactly. it gets automatically yeah. your yeah. So you start stupid yeah. and then you build in the smarts. Yeah. Yeah. Jonathan was at Mozilla, exactly. 20 minutes ago. Exactly. With the invite, that's not super hard. To with like checking people's availability, like are you available for lunch tomorrow? That's yeah. with, it's almost kind of, it's basically an invite to an event, event. which is exactly something right. that we do have yep. prototyped and use, not a lot, but you know, yeah, mark it up as an H event and just have a date. Or even hours of date. Yeah, yeah. It could also be important to, whenever you answer the questions, to be like, this was sent by the robots. It might not be correct, so that somebody knows. <laughs> That's even better. Or, or this might. This was uh, um, sent John's by the human. Website. Might not be <laughs> John's website is tentatively accepted based upon his availability. Yeah. yeah. Woo. That's getting yeah. fun. That's just a maybe. Yeah. That's what you say, John. You say, but you could set a rule which says, if it's these people, and this gets maybe. If, 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 if I'm a free, send a maybe. If I'm not free, send a no. And then, well, you know, like, if, if I'm, you know, yeah, if right. you don't know about it, but it doesn't matter, yeah. right? Right. And then you, as a human, can go back and actually fill it up later yeah. on. But yeah. it's like, it's, you know, setting this preliminary rule. And the point is, everyone gets to set their own rules yeah. because they're running their own and, and if this person asks, tell them I'm out of town and remind me not to post anything yeah. in town. Yeah. <laughs> so how does the, how does the uh, centralized competition look for this? Is there something that this can do that the centralized competition can't do? There's quite a lot that it can do that centralized competition That's can't do. That's what I guess. Yeah. Yeah, but most of, most of the those things with Alexa or whatever, they're not focusing on person-to-person -person branding. Mm -hmm. They're okay. focusing on kind of discovery or so what they do, they're based on you know, if you build a skill or you build you know, something called skills, something called action, mm -hmm. you as a developer for your platform and service, you build a skill. Right. And then, you know, that allows you to buy stuff or allows you to do whatever. But it's certainly not about these person to person sort of protocols. Yeah, no, it's yeah. Right. And, and it's going to be like super siloed because there's going to be the Google and there's going to be the Apple. There's already plays that are doing the Amazon ones. In, the, in the bot world, which is related to these, there are already people who are building kind of meta bot. Yeah. You know, so that you build a Slack bot and it will translate it into a, a Watson chat bot and it, you know, yeah. so there's already people who are looking at that kind of meta level. So the key thing is this, this, doing this on IndieWeb based on where your data lives, you're not really changing, like Alexa and Siri and whatever Google's is called can all live together and it's fine. And the, the cool thing about it is you can bridge across these things. Yes. So if you have an Alexa and I've got a, a HomePod, Apple's new fancy, well, well, that's Siri, right? Right, exactly. Um, and or or my watch or whatever, it doesn't matter because you can create a skill or you can create an action yeah. or you can whatever the Apple. Although well, Apple's kind of Apple's hot. Yeah, a little bit. Not only just to eventually it. they, they will, right? No, 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 no. You can you can already extend it, so, right. so they like they, they have opened that up now. So we like we could theoretically build across Apple, across, right. across Google, across Samsung. But that right. to me is why I think this is what yeah, I'm saying so interesting because at the end of the day, it makes it so those things don't matter, right? Exactly. Well, but Who that's cares? one level. But also I think it becomes more. Um, personalized in some level. Mm. You know, it's personalized on the person rather than on the service. And it's 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 like, you know, it's a sort of the equivalent of we have all of our uh, website that we use other than our personal website, but the set of those sizes different to each person. You can sort of factor that out that way. Centralize in, in, in inbox and then branch out around the size we personally use as opposed to you're branching out and up on somebody's uh, business development ecosystem. That's interesting. The, the basic level though, just would it not mainly just be a text-based API uh, 
to uh, send the questions and get the answers, and then that can just be yep. formatted to either speech or it could be text still, or you could just type it and you'd get the same same response. Well, essentially, you add the H, yeah. they can do it speech to text now. Yeah, yeah. you can write your own and use Watson Wait, no, to do that, but yeah. at the edges, it's the Wait. protocol is over text. It's not, you don't send voice around. Yeah. You send it. Wait, Wait, I just forgot how to speak English. I can't have the letters you <laughs> No, we translate, because they're a translation API. So they're not terrible either. Yeah, um, it's amazing. All right. Like they're really quite a struggle. Yeah, we're not far off the magazine. You can build Bible fish. You can do it. Yeah. Close. Being a non-native English speaker and looking at machine translation. <laughs> 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 it, it, it's gonna happen. It's like it's a matter of time. But because the intelligence to this is mostly human, like if, if you are uh, if you're two German speakers, <laughs> right? You can uh, you can talk to each other in German, send requests in German, and it doesn't matter. Right. I'm just thinking that this is why a protocol, from my perspective, shouldn't be a human, a yeah. human language. It should be yeah. something that's based on you know, yeah. machine mm -hmm. understandable words and numbers. But then, the, and this is why we say HTTP get as opposed to you know <laughs> whatever natural language we can use. Which would be get. But you would use it not as a And put always gonna use it. Last time I used, heard you use the word get, you did not work, uh, use uh, the word uh, HTTP slash one dot one. That's true. That's true. <laughs> I like the, just the basic analytic stuff, though, that isn't necessarily between websites. Yeah. Like, what was I watching on September 4th? What was that movie I watched? Mm -hmm. That's the kind yeah. of stuff that I think is also really, like, that's totally different than this interaction stuff we're talking about, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. You, you, it's still asking a question and getting it, a response. It is asking a question and getting a response, but the thing is, that is predicated on the fact that your website needs to have a reply, whereas the interaction things is literally just creating a notification on his side that he could, could then respond to. Having having me ask, what did I watch on September 4th, and getting on my website and being like, hey, what did you watch on September 4th? And it's like, that's what I was asking you. <laughs> so, well, you own that data. Where there's exactly. Like somebody it's else. You can just like, what was so and so watching on September 4th? Yeah, but it's, it's still cool because you can, like, if you're able to install new skills into your own website, yeah. um, you're able to say things like, like for example, with the content myself, a bunch of people are doing, yeah. you're saying, like, well, how, is my, how many miles did I cycle last month? Yeah. yeah. And, or how many miles of cycle last month versus the month before? What, what did Aaron eat last month? Yeah. Or if you have the connections, <laughs> how many miles, and your competitors, how many miles did I cycle last week? Uh, compared to how many miles did uh, Jonathan cycle? Okay. So it seems to me there's a bunch of different, relatively discrete technology components. There is the voice recognition part, which is outsourced. Yes. There is the translate some kind of uh, English um, half complete sentence into something that my own site understands. But I'm already saying things that I want you know, to say the things to my site that I know it will understand because it's my site. I have some idea what that is. Okay. But it's getting more complicated is translating this into something that somebody else's site can understand. Right? And then there is the aggregation part, which is because you might want to ask these kind of questions that aren't point to point. Mm -hmm. um, but that's all stuff that can be built on top of the like base protocol. Oh yeah, and it, and, it, it, one of the nice the things I like about this this is a project that's modular. Yeah, yeah like what you just showed is one of the building blocks. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, interesting. Because I think the the we talked about the web mention idea for a way for one site to send a request to another site, and I think the separate thing is the agent thing, mm -hmm. right? The notion that a CMS will have to implement or site will have to implement some agent that there would have to be some defined set of things that it could know or and it could have would have to like publish. But it wouldn't necessarily have to publish. These are things I know or I don't because that would be kind of up to the website, right? The web mention comes in, it can ask the agent, do you know how to do this? And it's like, I don't know. And then it just creates the web mention the inbox. If it does, pulls it up, aims it, sends a message back. Right? Is there any um, use case that isn't personal but more like small business? Where I would say, hey, um, I talk to my own son and say, hey, make an appointment with my hairdresser. Yeah. Sure. I mean, and it, make, and it would make sense to have, like, this is something that's completely out of, out of range for small businesses right now, but yeah. if WordPress, for example, just had plugins associated with it that could actually provide answers for those kinds of things, 
suddenly you would allow every small business to come um, and put for themselves. And that's essentially what, what WeChat is in China for these texts rather. So basically WeChat kind of is how you do business in China. Right? You don't have a website, you have an official WeChat web, uh, web page and you do everything including pay through it. Right? Mm -hmm. um, it's pretty staggering. And, and again, you use these chat interfaces rather. Yeah. So, so most of the stuff is definitely, like China is just way ahead. Right? In some ways, the agent is essentially a chatbot. Yeah. Think about it. yeah. And that's what Facebook um, is really trying to do. Messenger. The downside to that is chatbots, it's hard, right? If you actually look at Alexa versus Siri, for example, the way that you write an Alexa skill, it's very, very much like weaponized if then is yeah. essentially how it is. Whereas like Siri takes a completely different approach. Which is in many ways why they're kind of lagging. That's why Alexa time. works. Right. Well, it is. That's why Alexa yeah. works today, and Siri is a little bit still confused because they're going a completely yeah, different that decision, path. That decision tree approach. Is right. Sort of, it, it works up to a point. Right. 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 But, which is also why Alexa works in English, and that's pretty much it. Mm -hmm. And Siri works in like French and German and blah, 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 because they chose a different route. They've been going. So I'm just thinking, like, I don't know if I would want the agent on the website to actually be a chatbot. Because if you're going to make it work, across websites and, and, and all the stuff, you would have to have it be way too structured, right? It's better to have it just be an API, in my opinion, right? right? You, and it's sort of, it's sort of, you, you're breaking your chatbot into two pieces, right? One is more the, the chatty part, and then the language understanding and all that kind of stuff. And Leave that up back to and Apple and Amazon. Like, I would outsource all of that. Well, so I mean, give you a really good tool for building, and they're not alone, but they yeah. give you, like, you train, because you, you still, so at the moment, the people I know working in this, the traditional split of developer versus, you know, like the, you, you spend about 80% of your energy on training. Like yeah. 80% of your resources on training and 20% on development. Yes. Because it's getting the main knowledge That's right. into That's very true. Yeah. Yeah. main knowledge into, into, into the chatbot is, is kind of a hard part. Plus you need a domain expert to do it. Now obviously it depends on, you know, obviously if we're talking about booking an appointment, it's very different to you making a will. Yeah. You know, um, there's a lot more domain knowledge in one than the other, for example. Maybe the hardest thing is just the bootstrapping problem. Like nobody, if you, you do the voice command and you're talking to it, you're trying to interact with say, somebody else's website, if you fail oh. to get your action accomplished, yeah. it's very frustrating. 30% of the time, yeah. that's enough to just like, I'm you know, no, just a waste of my time. Like if, if it works 99% of the time, you'll do that. I was listening to a Google engineer last week on that very topic, and she was speaking at a product conference. She said, our voice interfaces, we find that if they have more than 4% of a failure rate, people yeah. don't use them. Yeah. Four percent. <laughs> and by the way, Google is like by far the best. The best. Yeah. 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 There's, there's, there's so many. So you're right. But then it gets really complicated when you're talking like indie web. Right. Where outsource, everybody's got like sort of all all like crazy custom yeah. setup. Like, like well, I guess the advantage is that early adopters are, you know, on, on terms of the technology curve are willing to put up with a lot of failure be, just to explore the technology, mm -hmm. right? So yeah. right now it almost like is a good fit for this, the nascent state of the technology, given yeah. it's kind of not going to work all the time anyway. Yeah. Um, this is the time to play around with it. I definitely think making it such that it's more about websites communicating with each other, like come up with a way to make that happen, which we kind of already have, and then some well-defined capabilities that we know yeah. about. And are they and discoverable as well? Are they discoverable? Right. Like in the sense that like you ask, yeah. well, can you support fine. this type of, you know, hey, can it, like, no, I'm sorry, I don't know how to do it. In yeah. some way of very quickly discovering. Yeah. Some, some years ago, I heard a similar number about electronic medical records. And it turns out that doctors are only willing to look at your electronic medical record if they're confident that it is accurate and complete yeah. with more than so many percent. Yeah. If right. they think that there might be major pieces missing or they're not certain, uh, they simply don't look at it because um, they will be misled. They, they feel that they're misled more than that it gives them any kind of use. Mm -hmm. And I think this is the, the same kind of thing here. Uh, right? If I wanted to make a reservation and um, you know, 80% of the time it works, with, uh, it, only 80% of the slots are available that I can get at it, I might pick up the phone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Although, interestingly, almost no one wants to use, to, to use their voice. So, so a couple of use cases have spread out. It is a, a small online bank or mortgage broker that does 100% of its mortgages by chatbots. Mm -hmm. um, and insurance companies, so that, that's a case where basically you have to use it and it has to be good enough. Although I have a feeling that they 
have people waiting to jump in if they detect them. So I know we're going to get out wrong with, but these are things that I've kind of seen people they are doing. And the other one is in, um, insurance for claims as specifically around a, a major event like a storm, mm -hmm. where they get overloaded with the capacity to have humans respond. Mm -hmm. They'll put a first line of a, a chatbot, mm -hmm. and then they'll fall back to humans. Mm -hmm. And they're, they're actually mod they're using a lot of intelligence to monitor centimeter people to, to step in the moment they detect anxiety or, or stress or things like that. So, so this is an interesting thing. This is really this significant commercial investment, and people are kind of delivering. But they're very. I think the important part, of it, this as well, they're very constrained problems. Right? And we're talking about the first use case you brought up is this idea that let's see if John is free for lunch on Wednesday. Right? That's a pretty constrained. Mm -hmm. And I think that idea of constraining a set of problems maybe a line in the middle existing any web formats or protocols, because they already exist, yeah. it would be a way to explore these things. Is there any kind of blogging kind of product out there whose primary user interface is text, as uh, is, is voice? Oh, okay. Okay. Before, before, you audio. Audio. before you Before you get to, they're yeah, asking somebody who right. would blog by voice, wouldn't you? Yeah. So I'll give you a quick example of a real thing. My, one of my friends and coworkers, Nika Epstein, she works in the WordPress community. She just wrote a uh, Alexa skill that uses the WordPress REST API to talk to her online database of uh, it's called Les Watch TV, and it ar archives all of the LGBTQ people in television, including when they die, which is apparently a lot. Um, and the, the skill is called Bury Your Queers, and you can ask it who died on a day or date to find out the names of dead queer females on TV. Do you have a Yes, I'll put them both in the, and she has a uh, specialized use case. <laughs> it's, it, it, but it's really interesting. It's exactly the type of thing that IndieWeb is all about, like yeah. scratching your edge. Um, so I'll put it in the, I'll put it in the, um, in the Etherpad. Awesome. <laughs> I also found it just hilarious and wonderful. She's one of my favorite people ever. That's really cool. I think it's in general, just a real interesting thing to experiment with. And put. So actually, because these are different interfaces, different um, use cases to, you know, it's not just like taking Twitter and making it yours. It's not like taking social networking and making it yours. It's actually embracing the fact that we all have our own nodes, that are a reflection of ourselves, uh, that store the kind of information we want them to store, and really, you know, making making them more personal. Um, I definitely agree that constrained simple constrained problems is the place to start using yeah. a very constrained idea. I would be interested in the basic notion of website to website web mention resulting in an inbox. Yeah. Like I think that's a very good place to start. Yeah. Because then your website, if it decides when something's about to come in the inbox before it places the inbox, it can decide. Yeah. Can I do something more interesting than this and put it in an inbox for you? Or it, could, it wouldn't even necessarily have to be an inbox. It could literally just send you an email, yeah. right? Or a text message or whatever. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Would it be? I have a responses page that just shows all my incoming web mentions. How, how would that be different from smart with them? How would that be different from uh, server side mail filtering? Basically the same thing, just a different protocol? Yeah, yeah. very similar. So I'd, I'd like to have basically a piece of code that can take all my incoming stuff, whichever protocol it comes, and yeah. then does smart things based on that. Yeah. It's almost like an if for web mentions, or for, for any notification. Yes. Right. But, right, because practically something comes in regardless, and then I'll prioritize that and take certain actions. And uh, if that uh, involved uh, actual physical mail coming in my inbox, I wouldn't mind that either. Yeah. Now, should I read that email? Open the letter. I don't know. Tell me. I think we did fundamentally just be like a question service. You get the questions, and it gives you back answers yeah. immediately if they can do it, answer immediately, yeah. or um, deferred exactly. if uh, they can't answer. I don't know. Here's a thermal link that you can check out. Yeah. Like it could be, you know, English language or right. other language take. 
you know, comes in and your the AI on your in the website would opt to intercept that and respond immediately. Um, and then it's like, okay, well that's just free form natural language. Do you do we want to augment that and say, okay, there's specific ad pegging and stuff to the to the question so no, hey, this is a question about scheduling, for example. It's tough. Yes, but I would say like the general case would be free form a question on anything in a natural language, and then more constrained, more vertical, more vertical big, would be big burden on the implementer, though, right? Like I like the notion of leaving the natural language processing to the people who do that, yeah. right? To me, that's but like more if it, theory. But if, if, if every like answer is that. deferred. You know, it could just be like, that's true. Hey, this was up on my phone, I'd take it back. That, you know, that's true. You know. so. Who is doing the most interesting work on personal agents of some kind these days? In used like to be, the theory, Amazon, or no, like, uh, whatever. There used to be all sorts of, um, there used to be all sorts of research last time I looked, which was maybe 10 years ago, about various kinds of personal agents that do stuff. And I have not paid any attention to it whatsoever, mm -hmm. but I think it has just shown up right in the middle of what we're talking about. Yeah. Yes. I put in some links to, to things that will book your points, but that, that's, yeah. that's one I've seen a lot of a fair bit of working coming around. But. Yeah. It seems like all the, the, the best funded AI startups right now are solving the appointment schedule. Right. Problems. Right. Or, or like, uh, like my wife's job, she's a nurse at the hospital, and the complexity of the staff scheduling yes. is Insane, and it's a multi million dollar problem. Right. There massive, so it's like, there's a massive yeah. Canadian company that basically schedules all the sports competitions in the world, like to get all the time, like who plays whom within constraints yeah. about this is a popular derby, so this one can't be like, like that. There's a massive Canadian company, they do it for everyone in the world, basically. So this is a very strange, yeah. And like, so it goes to show that there's real money in, in uh, scheduling, like yeah, because yeah. it can be millions of dollars, right? Yeah. So, because it's a, it's, it's a, a traveling salesman problem. And you know, P is not equal to well, well <laughs> so waking hypothesis, P is not equal to P. So now, here, here's a thought, like, you know, if you have indie web people and they're getting like, personal questions coming in that they have mentioned endpoints. And so like, the default would be oh we're just gonna defer and manually answer right. these questions. Would it be nice if they could like sort of like allow somebody to tap into that and uh like uh um, the, 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 the uh, what's the site that does the like, AI competitions? Uh, uh, Kaggle. Kaggle. Kaggle, yeah. yeah. So do like, hey, here's a bunch of data from a hundred different indie web people who are getting queries anonymized or something. Mm -hmm. and can, can you package that in the like, Kaggle competitions and like, hey, can you answer some of this stuff? Wow. Um, like do that in aggregate because Individually, I don't think anybody's going to have enough time to like really, well, I personally didn't like really do it. Drilling down is probably what, in almost like our last, last five minutes, this mm -hmm. lot, I think. Um, it sounds to me like what some of the things that we can think about, like as first steps, are site to site web mentions mm -hmm. and possibly a microformat uh, representation of questions and answers. Mm -hmm. That sounds like a reasonable, a reasonable thing, yes. and then we can, like further down the line, yeah. we can refine the questions and have different data structures within that. Well, if, if, should it, you know, we have a set of answers already, like H of is an answer to a question. For a text question, well, yeah, exactly. Like, you know, as in what's in the game. Exactly. Uh, not what's in the game, you know, someone, right. the reverse, in Japan, right? So uh, there, there are answers to like, you know, where's Jonathan now? Right? Well, there's an H card there and an yeah. H calendar on right. like that. So we already have answers, like, we're already publishing certain things that could be answers to questions. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So do you align the questions with the stuff that's already happening? So you have to worry about kind of goal or right. yeah. like the most sensible one would be like, uh, what's Ben's email address? That's it. Mm -hmm. And then you get to just on the H card and just respond with just the email address. Right. So then that's something that the theoretically that the agents on your own site could do, right? Like you could that's right. have that intelligence, yeah. And so you can actually already show use cases without having to actually change either the, the other yeah. the other side in any way. I do think well, I do think that there, there might need to be a little bit more than that, right? Because there's some subtle piece that could creep in into the question, right? Because you could ask, you know, 
when you're asking about location and a person with H card and H event, uh, or uh, anyway, you get what I'm saying here. Whichever um, Yeah. There could be like, for example, um, where are they, or what did they last do, or will they go with me to this location, right? And it starts to get, it adds on additional layers of complexity where we don't necessarily know what the answer is going to be. But if we start with other things that people already answer, yeah. but there are already hidden things in life, right? Yeah. So we should, you, the really easy part is to ask the questions that already asked, and, yeah. and then, because that also then proves out. Yeah. yeah. Like, hey, you, I can I have that. an can, can I meet up with, with Jonathan on Wednesday? Yeah. I don't know, or definitely yeah. not because whatever, or possibly using the existing things we have. There's already there, right? As a foundation, like a kind of, you know, it's your uh, what's, the, what's the word I'm looking for? It's kind of your touchstone, right? You're going to go through and say, okay, what would the question be for this type? Of That's it, right? And then you you have this virtuous cycle because if there's value in asking those questions. It, people will, will, will put more information on their website, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. The, yeah. What, incentive, awesome. what, how, what incentives people have for publishing their location yeah. in real time, like Grant does, right? Well, now I know where you are all the time. So we, we, it's, you're the perfect person to ask this question because we literally know <laughs> it's there. I, I really want to make a page. It's just, it's just really so why, how, do you mark, how do you mark that up? Do you use lat long and yeah. so it's with an H? It's an H card with a long or uh, I can't. I don't know. But, uh, so we, we can ask you where website already where it is yeah. in real time. So I've added that in another action item in the yeah. in, in the note. It's actually looking at those use cases where you can just go out and find a resting code yeah. information that the website. Now that's the shine. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's just a case of having your local agent being able to interpret that question and then go out and just yeah. private refund. Yeah, which is cool. And it made for a great demo. Hey Siri, where's John right now? Yeah, John's at these places. Yeah, <laughs> pretty cool. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, and we, we could actually answer the question that was the name of this session, which is where is Tantec right now? That would be pretty cool. Yeah, theoretically. Um, I do think that knowing the questions you're going to ask helps tremendously. <laughs> yes. you just have your use cases. <laughs> but and, then the, and then the skill bit is like if you want to go to, I mean, the, the, the way to start almost certainly is to use the voice recognition in Chrome. Yeah. So you don't have to worry about it. But otherwise, like, then you could build skills that are essentially, you know, clearly that demarcated questions you want to ask. Yeah. But you could, yeah, I mean, you could absolutely build uh, Alexa skill in the same way. Like, oh, yeah. Once you, you have know, this, uh, the Alexa skill is. Sorry, yeah, exactly. Alexa, ask in the web. Yeah. Exactly. I feel like part of the, one of the challenges is knowing the quality of the answer you're getting back. So yeah. if, you ask, if you ask where a grant is, the question is where is grant? You get back an answer that's going to be up to date. If you ask where you are and it says you last checked in, mm. you know, in this place eight hours ago, well, what if you went out for lunch? Then yeah. that's the lower quality yeah. answer. Yeah. So like looking for, right? Asking for um, notify me when somebody comes is in town or is back to yeah, lunch. Right. That's, right. that's sort of useful. Yeah, yeah. So of course, and the privacy angle to this, right? Uh, right. And then you choose yourself to opt in and opt out. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But if you have mentioned, also, then you have some idea. Doing it, yeah. And you know why it's flagging for you the things that you're showing the world that you're not aware of? I, I just want to highlight that very quickly because what you said is really important. It's not just about Q&A, it's also about yeah. proactive notifications. Yeah. And um, like we don't have much time, but exactly that, like notify me when so and so yeah. is within, you know, kind of, you know. Right. And one of the nice things about it is that this is privacy protecting, right? It doesn't yeah. mean you see all these locations. Yeah. Right. When he's actually here. Yeah. Fine friends does it. Oh, I always see fine friends. Okay. So yeah. not if I'm even a person's within yeah. a certain business. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. Sorry. Yeah. it could be like, um, call me back when when you talk to Mary. And right. then and then the person talks to Mary, but they forget to call you back. Right. right. But their bot could be like, hey. Did you talk to Mary so and so's waiting for you to find out if we, when you actually, did? Uh, actually, the should know that you actually just occurred to me. How do we know who Mary is or who Ben is or any of that? So oh, only the rail equals me. <laughs> well, yeah, but we don't, like, we still don't have, and this is getting back to Ryan's thing earlier, we don't really have any accepted indie web way to say, these are my friends or this is my network, this is my my social graph. There'd have to be a nickname cache on your site, which some people do have. Yeah. I mean, it, 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 you know, it's sort of like the, the Uber blog role, right? Anyway. I, I don't think it actually has to be accepted in any way. I think it just has to be a way that works on your own site. Right? Okay. But you do have to have a, you do, you that's the point. You've got to have a front of us. 
And at the worst case, it could be askword.io, right? Right, which is good enough. Well, except it, it'll misspell word.io. Right. It's gonna, <laughs> yeah. like, it will. It will. Um, yeah. it'll, that that that'll fall over pretty quickly. But I think I think getting to the point where we have like contact lists is going to be really important. Well, and if you can have if you have this capability that can be accessed via voice, having I think starting from a place where you can just do this on your site, yeah. I can just go and pick Ben and I can say request. Uh, lunch tomorrow at whatever, yeah. and I could send the web mention over to you. And I mean, starting without that is the easiest way to go. Yeah. So having just plain interfaces that create the right markup and send the right web mention over and have it at your side yeah. be able to kind of. Yeah. Mm -hmm. we're, we're the startup, and I think we're actually sort of tackling this problem a little bit because we have like whole podcast and we did the transcripts on the podcast, but we want to pick out like, who the people are. One of our ideas is to do NLP, like we're going to probably have from the show notes and you know who well, we are. We could, we could, could uh, uh, they also, uh, like, Microsoft, like we can actually match voices if we train them. Ah, yeah, yeah. So we can do that. But there's also like, so here, here's the host of the podcast. They'll usually introduce by right. name, and then the next person to right. talk is usually more what they say. So what are you using? Mark and Mark size. So we, we can, we, you know, this is, this is all, we're just a pretty early stage, but the, the data is really right there in the content of the podcast, who the next speaker will be. We know the, we know, we can identify the name right. of the, the host of the podcast because they're always the same, they can match your voice, we can train it. But the guest is different every, yeah. every week. Uh, but you know who that person is. But we don't know from the show notes, so then if they introduce that person, yeah. it's a very 99% like, likelihood that that unknown speaker is yeah, that, that person. Is. Yeah. So, like, like, we're trying to avoid people having to type this stuff. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'll come talk to you about some stuff later. Yeah. On. Podcast, so some of the just simple heuristics and stuff in a lot of cases. Well, even if you get like 95% right, it's a lot better value than if it's not there at all. Yeah, right. 96. As long as people can correct yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> when it comes to us. Yeah. Yeah. Right on the edge. Yeah. I think we're out of time. Thank you, everybody. That was great. Yeah. This was exciting. Yeah. Okay, that was it for this program. Is that right? Yeah. Uh, there's too many things I want to work on. <laughs> and the next day, maybe. See, I delegate. I uh, just let you guys. <laughs> <laughs>